did you hear something or did you say something that you say, oh, I really said something really good that everybody should hear? Anybody? Yes. My neighbor had something very interesting to say, just an observation that she's made of um, not having come from a Mennonite or Catholic background, but having lived in this area a couple of years and what she's noticed in things that she's heard, basically uh, Mennonites and brethren, friends that she's met, topics that she's seen that they avoid. <laughs> yeah, they don't really like to get involved in discussions where you're going to have strong opinions. They seem to avoid it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, that's, uh, that's, that's an old Mennonite trick, uh, just <laughs> of avoiding it. Uh, the other one is right now the psychological maneuver of uh, getting someone to do something because you're nice. What nice? What's that called? Come on. What is it? Passive aggressive. The, the, uh, some I have a, I had a, 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 a medical partner that was uh, everybody said he was the nicest guy around, but I experienced him as very passive aggressive. I mean, he got, he got people to do what he wanted uh, because, by being so nice, and uh, and it's, that's not a bad way to go. Is it? I mean, <laughs> he wasn't hard to work with. Let's put it that way. All right, anybody else? Bob. I guess I have something to say. I, I found this, these, these sessions extremely helpful, personally, because I'm living in the conflict between sacramental life versus Mennonite spirituality. And, and um, over the last period, I had been living in Chicago and, and t attending mass six days a week, month, Monday through Saturday, and then being a Mennonite on Sunday. Well, I've moved here to Goshen, and I can't do that. Uh, for one thing, I would have to actually become a Roman Catholic to, to go to Mass at, in the Roman Church. And so I've been struggling how to deal with this here. And I, but anyway, part of it is I've suddenly realized I need to change my definition. I've been calling myself a Catholic Mennonite all my life. Well, not all my life, my adult life. Uh, and I think I'm a sacramental Mennonite because uh, I'm, I'm really not involved with the Roman Catholic Church. But this has been really helpful to me. And, and several things that, that uh, John Roth said were, were really helpful in clarifying some things I've been thinking about. Oh, the, the big difference, though, for me between being a Mennonite, the Mennonite experience and the, and the sacramental experience is seeing that God really comes to you in bread and wine and water and oil. And um, I came to that experience back in 1968 because I couldn't find grace in the, in the Mennonite experience, and I found it in the, in the Lutheran and Episcopal Church. Thank you, Bob. Anybody else? Uh, I think one of the things that struck me is that is that both um, Mennonites and Catholics, or at least subsets of them, you know, who wants to make universal statements, um, have grown up with very insular experiences. We've had stereotypes of the other, and and they're just the mirror. They're just the mirror side. I, I thought it was only, you know, we were the only ones who did that. No, the Catholics do the same thing. When, when you live in a community and are part of an educational system that, that values that and, and holds it close. So hearing that, well, that felt a little better. And then, and then a similar subset that says, that senses somehow, oh, this isn't quite enough. And whether that's a longing for silence or whether that's the development of friendship or whether that's um, the... Uh, recognition of social justice and that place in the faith, something sort of tugs at you and says, oh, they have something that, that would enrich me. And, and since we've gotten rid of the notion that, you know, only Mennonites are Christians or only Catholics are Christians, then we get into this more expansive space of, oh, what else could I learn? 
instead of, well, I'll have to stop being a Mennonite to appreciate what somebody else has. Oh, no, no, no. You know, the face of Christ is so big. And so the, the largeness of things in this conversation, that's part of what I appreciate about Bridge Folk, too. Okay. Um, I think we'll uh, stop at this point. Uh, we're going to close with... Um, a rendition of uh, Botticelli's uh, the, the Lord's Prayer. Uh, he's an uh, Italian baritone that many of you know um, about, at least. And I, I think John has it ready for us. And he, I told him that if um, if it's if he can't do it, he's going to sing it himself. So, uh, and uh, I don't know. It seems though we should do something. Uh, 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 Special to recognize that we are a group uh, to understand and maybe even hold hands and that sort of thing around the circle and and Oh, oh, oh.